Hello everyone, welcome to Madden Science. Today's video focuses on ecology and population dynamics. Specifically, we'll be covering life tables and survivorship curves. Animals we'll be focusing on will be doll sheep, melted ground squirrels, and barnacles. In addition to learning about life tables and survivorship curves, we'll be learning about or maybe practicing our graphing skills and working on our data fluency using spreadsheets and formulas. The lab activity covers and fits in right with population ecology. So for AP biology, this is in unit eight ecology, it would also work well with IB programs and regular biology classes. And in APES for AP environmental science, this is 3.3 in unit three populations for survivorship curves. I'm hoping to make these videos as practical and helpful as possible. To that end, please check out the description below for full lab write-up and data, along with links and helpful lab info. And I'd really appreciate it if you could give me some feedback, some ideas, some comments in the comments section below. Demography is a study of how populations change over time, or population dynamics. We'll look at life tables, which, when you think about it, is pretty optimistic, considering we're looking at age and reproductive stats and when these animals are going to die. So maybe we could call it a death table? Where does this data come from? Well, naturalists or field scientists keep track of numbers in the field. You know, like some of my heroes and all-time science legends, Charles Darwin, Alfred Wallace, Henry Bates, Jane Goodall. We'll look closely at demographic data from three animals, each with unique life tables. Our first and most interesting data set is on doll sheep, collected by naturalist and wildlife scientist Adolf Murray on Mount McKinley in Denali National Park. His work was published in 1944. His meticulous research is recorded and available to us in his book, The Wolves of Mount McKinley. Take a look at this amazing book. The amount of data, the information, the layout, the design, you can just see the effort and the scientific expertise. How amazing is this book? Thanks to Google, you too can read it online. This book is a classic. His detailed research helped lead to the end of a long-held practice of predator eradication in Denali National Park and elsewhere, and it helped protect biodiversity, specifically with wolves. The data he collected on doll sheep was connected to his work with wolves. Now, what do we do with this data? Here are the life tables and survivorship curves of doll sheep, building ground squirrels, and barnacles. They help give us the age of the organism when they're most likely to die. Let's zoom in on this. What stories do the life tables tell? We can see things like age, number of alive at each interval, which then tells us how many died, the death rate, and then if we need it, the death rate per 1,000. No, life history traits are the product of natural selection, reflected in development, physiology, and behavior. When reproduction begins, how often organisms reproduce, and a number of offspring. Life table data can be represented as a graph. Here are some classic examples from your biology textbook. To construct the full table, you'll need to start with quality data and then do some math. We'll be replacing the humans with doll sheep and the mice with squirrels. A quick breakdown between the types reveals the following generalizations between type one, two, and three and yields information again on death, timing, mortality, baby numbers, parental involvement, K versus R strategies, and examples. Life tables in humans can be compiled in reverse by visiting a cemetery. This is a compelling lab activity and works great as a class field trip, or you could always look up data online. As we transition to our spreadsheet, it's really important that we focus on and practice working with and analyzing data. That's our data ability or data fluency. Let's jump over to Google Sheets or Excel and analyze the data and construct our own survivorship curves. Remember, 
data and full lab write-up are available in the description below. Our work with spreadsheets and working on data fluency will be our own choose your own adventure. So it exists kind of on a scale or a spectrum and we can scaffold it in many different ways. So you can jump in and get all the instructions and help you need, or you can skip ahead to the parts that are gonna be most helpful to you. Welcome to our data analysis part of the video. So working on data fluency, data ability. Here I am on Google Sheets. We've got a few different options for you. So keep in mind that you can kind of select the scaffolding level that's most helpful or actually most challenging to you. You can also see at the bottom, we've got different tabs and you can stop or pause, fast forward, rewind the video as needed. What do we got? So here is the graphical view the spreadsheet view of Wolves of Mount McKinley doll sheep data from Adolf Murray back in 1944. Now you can take this and delete the graph or put it back in there should you need it. You can see the numbers here all filled in, including what it is that we've graphed. Now if you skip along, we've got the empty version. We've got the one that's got formulas already embedded. We have squirrels, and this is from Campbell AP Biology book. So you can look at this data. Squirrels is type two, and then our type three, hey, barnacles. So another good example. And again, you can kind of pick and choose how much of this you want to graph. You for sure would probably want to practice the graphing and take that out as or when you need it. What we're going to do, so again, you can peek at answers right here in the graph that you should end up with, we'll go with doll empty and see how it is that you can take advantage of the power and magic of spreadsheets to help you do these calculations. Starting here, we're going to fill out B and then we'll do D, E, F and make a graph. So if we're here, we want to know number dying during interval. So at this interval, we started with 608 and you ended with 47. So that's should be some basic math. Yeah. And tell us that 608 minus 487. Wait, nothing happened. So that doesn't work. You got to make it a formula. So I go to this cell. You can put an equal sign ahead of that. And that tells it to do the math for you. Hit enter and you get 121. Yay. Now what if I want to do the same thing throughout? Just copy on down. Usually you can select this and pull down. Let's see what happens. That didn't work. Let's see if we go and type this in a little bit differently. So if we go in, put in a formula, but base it off something that can be repeated. I can put in not 608 and 47, but the cell that contains those numbers and that information. So I want to type in here, equal sign, and I'll pick the cell, which is C2 minus C3 and it highlights it for you, hit enter. You still get the same number, but now it gives us the option to autofill it. And you'll see that along the way, if I click check mark, it has us here, C3 minus C4, C4 minus C5, on and on and on, all the way down, which is really helpful. Now, if I wanna do number of surviving as a fraction of newborn, you can do a similar calculation, except that we want 47, divided by 608. So if I put in there, and I put 47, which is C3, divided by C2, and hit enter, right, that sort of works. Only problem is it changes both numerator and denominator throughout. So I want to keep the numerator changing, top number, but keep the denominator the same. So I'm going to hold or have a place mark for that. The way to do that is to type in here again, equals, and I can put C2 divided by, in this case, it's also C2 or 608, but I want the 608 to be held in there. So I put C dollar sign 2. And when I hit enter, we get this. And from here, we can copy on down and get 
the values for each of these. And note that C2 has stayed the same throughout. And in this case, for D7, we have C7, 447, divided by 608. Now, what if we wanted a different number of decimal places in here? And you said, hey, let's go to, I don't know, 5, 6, 7, 8. Or you want to just go to 2. We'll keep it at 1. Now, mortality rate can be calculated by taking how many died divided by how many you started with. So this will be B2 divided by C2. So I'll put equals B2 divided by C2. Enter. And again, it gives me the autofill option. I'll hit check mark. Ta-da. And notice it gives it to me. Well, it's got four decimal places. We'll kick it down to three to look nice and good. Last column, the Fs. If you want to look at what Fs contain, it says number surviving per 1,000. So surviving is the Ds. Now I'm going to take this column and multiply it by 1,000. So I'll put in here equals D2 and then multiplied by is the asterisk. So asterisk 1,000. So that's D2 highlighted times a thousand. And again, do we want to autofill that? Let's do it. Again, we can go to different number of decimal places. That's zero down. I don't know. We'll go with just a whole number. All right. So what we want to graph is age interval. I'll just copy this over so we can see it visually. Control C and over here. Control V. And the number surviving per 1,000, highlight that and paste it over here. Wait, that didn't work. So what do we want to do here? We want to take this column and we want to paste special. So we want to paste, in this case, we can just do the values. Hey, that worked. So again, if you come up with something that's not quite working, just play around a little bit. Now I'm going to highlight this. I want to insert chart. And ta-da, it pretty much does it for you. If we look at this, what's on there for us? We've got a title which works. We'll probably want to say, you know, doll, sheep, Mount McKinley, 1994. 1944, which will work just fine. We've got our y-axis, we've got our axis. If you click on these three dots, you can edit the chart. So say it didn't give you the information you wanted. You can go over here and select the type of graph. Say you wanted a bar graph or something. We'll kick back over here to our scatter. We can play around with the x-axis can switch on those. We can customize. So there's one other thing we want to do with these. Note that we've got automatically from our table. We've got surviving per 1000 on the Y, age interval on the X. We can change our style, our axes. If I click on axes, the one thing I want to do for our vertical that we'll see on all survivorship curves, which is to make it logarithmic. So if I click on this and go log scale, you can see it changes up our graph ever so much. And then we're done. So we're doing virtually the same thing either on this spreadsheet here where you started out with just the bare bones, age interval and number surviving at beginning of interval. Again, that data should be coming from real life. Again, that real life was from our good friend Adolf Murray, or you got it in a textbook or a worksheet perhaps. Let's say as you had with building ground squirrels or Barnacles. All right, that'll do it for this video on life tables, survivorship curves, population dynamics. Please let me know if you've had any questions, any comments, any feedback on things that we can do better or differently for next time. And take care, everybody.